Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a living room tour and I have really been putting off this video. We moved into this flat in August last year and I really wanted to do like tour videos and all different things like that to do with our new home. And I just found that I kept putting it off, especially the last few months when I knew I definitely wanted to do this video, I just kept delaying it. And what I've realized is that I think a lot of people who move into new homes find this, you never really feel fully satisfied with your space. I feel like I'm never gonna feel like it's done. There was always an excuse, the flat's not tidy enough, I haven't bought that plant yet. It's not perfect. And then I thought, you guys don't mind. I think you'd prefer to see it just how it is normally than like a perfect living room. It's by no means perfect. It's not exactly how I would like it to be, but I still love it. So I wanted to share our little space with you guys. And whenever I post Instagram photos, you guys always ask like, where's that from? So I'm literally gonna talk through the whole room, tell you where everything is from and show you kind of before videos when it was empty. I hope you guys like these little kind of tour videos. I've already done a wardrobe tour. So if you haven't yet seen that, I will link it here. I talk through kind of my wardrobe space and how I organize my wardrobe. But today I'm talking living room. So when we moved into this flat, it had been done up by a developer. So it was pretty new apart from the awful pink washed walls. The floor was new. It was just kind of like a blank canvas for us to work with and that's what we wanted. I knew I didn't have time for like a big project. So it was more just about putting our personality into things and just changing a few things and furnishing the place. Our living room is attached to our kitchen, which I think is quite common in small London flats. I really like it because it means that while I'm cooking, I can be chatting to friends, it's quite sociable, but it also means that we have less space for like a dining room table. So we can't really have many people around for dinner. It's great for now. Now, though so the room has like laminate wooden floors and white walls we just went for like a plain white wall and it's the brightest room in the flat it's south facing so it gets a lot of sunlight which is great so let me just talk you through the room I'm gonna start from where I am now and then talk my way around the room so I am sitting on our sofa and buying a sofa is probably one of the hardest things and not only do they take forever to be delivered but it's hard to find the right thing we are up some very narrow stairs in our flat so we couldn't just get any old sofa sofa companies don't put sofas through windows anymore I found out so we had to buy a sofa that was detachable do I mean that uh, a sofa that comes apart and can be put into pieces so that they could reassemble it in the flat which is really hard to find because we wanted a really comfy sofa me and Rich spend a lot of time on the sofa we watch TV almost every night so after looking everywhere we eventually found a sofa in a company called multi York we knew we wanted something gray something quite deep and comfortable to sit on and it's absolutely perfect it's quite big for the space but it's a massive priority for us and actually it's worked out quite well because if you take the cushions off we can sometimes use it as like a spare bed if we want friends to stay over so this is from multi york it came to pieces they bought it in a van took it apart and then put it back together in the flat and we both absolutely love it the cushions are from habitat and h and m i like to change the cushions up every kind of season but at the moment i'm going for the orange thing i feel like it adds a lot of warmth to the room we've got a lot of blue in here so it's quite cool toned and i feel like orange adds some really much needed warmth. H&M Home is brilliant for cushion covers so you can just keep changing them up whenever you get bored. The rug that's in this room is from West Elm. We really wanted a rug because there's so much wooden floor in this flat it can make it feel a little bit cold and it's nice to have some kind of nice soft texture under your feet. It's beautiful because it's not you don't have to worry about like staining it because it's quite textured it's lots of different gray tones one thing to note it does shed quite a bit so we end up getting like fluffy balls in the corners of the room which is a little bit annoying but i feel like over time that will kind of wear off so the rug goes under the coffee table and under the sofa just above the sofa are a few pictures and we got this picture shelf from ikea and i love these because it just means that you don't have to hang things on the wall a lot of the a lot of our walls aren't sturdy enough to like bang nails into so this is a really easy way to kind of change up your pictures all the time without damaging the wall at the moment we have three pictures up there one is a photo by my friend steve booker that i bought online and i absolutely love it i think he went for a walk with his dog on new year's day and took that photo in the woods the next one anna bought me as a present i absolutely love it and then the third one i got from a shop on Carnaby Street that I absolutely love and I will link it down below. I'm actually gonna link everything I'm talking to down below, everything I can find, so 
check the description box for all the details. I'm not completely happy with these three pictures and how they're arranged. I've got a couple of other pictures I want to frame and see if they fit better, but as I said, you can always kind of play around with it and that's what I love to do. Just to the right of the sofa is a chimney breast. It hasn't actually got like a fireplace in there, but it is there and we wanted to use that wall as a way to make the room feel a little bit bigger. And the best way to do that is by putting up a mirror. And my friend Hannah actually bought this mirror for her new flat and I saw it and I was like, wow, that is amazing. Where did you get it from? I thought she'd got it from like an antique market somewhere. And she said Ikea and it was like 90 pounds. So I went straight to Ikea to get it. I love it because it's not silver, it's not gold. It's like somewhere in between. I really love the detail. It's a really big mirror and it definitely makes the room feel a lot larger. I love it that when I'm standing in the kitchen, I can kind of see in the mirror and it just works so well for this room. Okay, so right in the middle of the room is our coffee table. And I think the theme I was going for this, for this room is kind of wood, and metal and glass, because those are kind of the three textures I really like and I think they work well together. So this coffee table is those three things together. It's got a wooden base, metal kind of structure, and then a glass top. And the thing about glass, similar to mirrors, is that, is that it makes a room feel bigger. If you have a lot of solid items in the room, it can just clutter the room and make it feel really small. So we went for a glass top. It does mean you have to clean it more often, but I really like this table. There are two quite big drawers, which is great for storage. Our flat has no storage at all. We haven't got an attic. We hardly have any cupboards. So everything we bought, we wanted to have storage as well. And then under the glass, you can kind of store things there as well and display some pretty things. I have this West Elm tray. Again, it's not perfect. I feel like I haven't really put anything particularly nice on it yet, but I've got a couple of succulents, um, some Polaroid photos that I'm hoping to frame soon, like a pretty bowl and some candles, and those just sit under there. And then I've also got some coffee table books. I've got my Blogosphere magazine, and then some books from Rankin. I know this book is controversial and everyone gets angry at me, but I really love this book. It's full of some amazing photographs and Rankin gave it to me personally, so I love having it out on display unless my nieces and nephews come around and then I just kind of swap it over so it's not on the top. Okay, so moving over to the TV area. I know a lot of people don't like having the TV as a main focus in the room. A lot of my friends kind of chose not to put their TV on the wall because they don't want it to be the main focus. Me and Rich watch quite a lot of TV and we are in the flat just us two most of the time. So we wanted to make the TV quite like a big thing in the room. Why not, hey? So it took quite a while to find a TV stand that fitted in this little space that we have. This one we found from made.com. It took forever to arrive, so that was a little bit frustrating, but it is perfect. It's kind of, I think it's 60s style. It's white, so it really just blends in with the wall. It's got nice wooden legs, so it kind of blends in with the floor. And again, it's got storage space. It's got two drawers that we can fill with things and then a space for our sky, box and Rich's Xbox. The TV is Samsung, we got it from John Lewis with vouchers. It's huge and great, we love it. Above the TV, when we moved into this flat, there was a boiler there and it was just the most ridiculous place to put a boiler. You would think that the boiler would be over by the kitchen, but instead they kind of took up the beautiful space where we could have had lovely shelves and it's just too expensive to move a boiler, we looked into it. So instead we wanted to come up with a way to cover the boiler without taking away all that nice space. So we actually got someone to build a cupboard around the boiler. He covered the pipes below and made these beautiful cupboard doors. I asked for it to be shaker style because it kind of goes with the windows in our flat. So it has a border around the edge. We painted them all white, there's shelves inside. So on the left is the boiler. And on the right, we can store like our iron and any kind of cleaning supplies in there. And I bought the little handles from Anthropology, and we just got him to put those on. So they're white, they blend in with the walls, but the handles are a little bit special. The cupboard worked out really well, and I'm so happy we did that. Okay, so moving round to the left, I have this little stool. And I actually got this from Soho Farmhouse when I was there. I had a little voucher for the store, so I picked it up. As I said, we don't have a proper dining room table. We've got a small table with two chairs. So we try to have spare chairs where we can. I use my office chair sometimes and then this stool comes in handy as well. We can use it as a little step ladder, 
and as a spare seat. But at the moment we just have this terrarium, I think that's what it's called, on top, which looks really pretty. I don't think it should really go here, but that's where it is at the moment. Oh, I forgot to mention, by the way, just down there by the sofa, we had this little kind of copper basket that I got from Home and Pantry, and we have loads of throws in there from like H&M and West Elm. I love having loads of throws around for if we get cold when we're on the sofa, and I just think they look really nice as well to decorate the sofa. We wanted to have some extra seating as well. The sofa can sit around three people comfortably, but we often have friends around, so we wanted to get another chair and I wanted to get one of those huge love seats, but I didn't want to block out the light from the window either. So we ended up just getting an armchair. This is from West Elm. I absolutely love it. It's quite a pale grey, so we don't tend to let people sit on it and eat spaghetti bolognese. That's all I'm going to say, but I love it and it's so comfortable. And we have this cushion on top that I got from a shop in Hove when I was with Anna called Ijiji, I think it's called, but I love it. It's just a beautiful kind of powdery blue color. And then as you also might've noticed on our windows, we have shutters. Now this was a big decision for us. We have these huge windows and this is the only room in the flat that I can film videos in. So I knew that I needed a way to control the light. I felt like covering the windows with curtains would be such a shame, but shutters are really expensive. We got these from Hillary's Blinds where they come and they fit them to the shape of your window and they advise you and you can pick whether you have one of those things that goes up and down, how many shutters you have, how wide or small they are. And in the end, we ended up not getting some other things so that we can instead invest in the shutters. And I'm so glad we did. It completely changes the room. It really goes with the style of the flat and it makes it so much easier to control the light and give some nice privacy as well because otherwise the people opposite can completely see into our lounge. So I'm really happy with those. We just went for plain white shutters. And then moving around the room, we have our painting and me and Rich actually bought this in the south of France in I think it was Old Antibes Market. We bought it before we even knew we had the flat but I knew that when we did get a flat we'd want to have some art and I didn't want to just go and get any old thing from like Ikea that everyone has and I saw it and fell in love and just hoped that it would fit somewhere in our flat and it fits perfectly on this wall. It's quite long and narrow but it's a painting of a girl standing in the sea. I love the blue swishy tones and colors, it's completely up my street and every time I look at it, it just makes me so happy. Below the painting, we've got a small table. It kind of looks quite big, but you really, you can fit four people at a squeeze, but two people comfortably. So we kind of use it to eat breakfast. It's Rich is working from home, he'll sit there. Sometimes I film in front of it, as you guys would know. It's a marble top table from West Elm with dark wood legs and then we also got the matching chairs to go with it and I love this I love marble I didn't want to overdo it with the marble but I think it's the perfect amount to go with the kind of glass metal and wood that we already have on top of the table I have some pretty flowers I like to put in a kilner jar and a very sad looking fruit bowl that has really quite sad fruit in it so then we had this space to the left and what I ideally would have loved to do is extend the kitchen but it's quite hard to do without blocking the window and we thought about having a little breakfast bar there. We had loads of different ideas. And in the end, I saw these shelves on West Elm and thought actually that would be a great area for some shelves. So what I did is I got the shelves from West Elm and then the pipe underneath is actually from Urban Outfitters. It was only 35 pounds. It came with a shelf, but I just detached the pipe and attached it to the bottom of our West Elm shelves. So I think it looks really cool. We have three shelves. This is the part that I'm least happy with because I just haven't found like a pretty arrangement on the shelves. It's just not a priority for me at the moment. Normally we have a really pretty ivy plant that kind of hangs down the shelves, but that died and I haven't bought a new one. But at the top, we've got this kind of herbs print that I bought from Ikea. I think it's really cool actually for an Ikea print. It kind of goes with the whole kitchen. Rich's weird kind of glass coffee thing. We've got a fake grass plant from Ikea in a marble pot. We've got a, a money pot that's in the shape of lips. I've got this random gold pineapple that I got from Oliver Bonus. Some spaghetti. And then on the bottom shelf, we've got tea, avocados, an orange bowl, recipe books, and then some little glass bottles. So it is the shelf of randomness. There is no order to it. And that's something I definitely want to sort out. If you guys have any tips for like styling shelves, please let me know. Just below the shelves, we have that pipe where we like to hang like our hand towels. And sometimes we have a basil plant in that empty, sad pot there. And below that we have our bin, which I love our bin. We got it from John Lewis. It took a long time to buy the bin. Boring adult decisions where you have to decide what size bin to get. But we went for this one. I really like it, it has two sections. 
I use my label maker to differentiate between recycling and everything else. So that's the living room. I'm not really gonna do like a kitchen tour yet. Um, we still have some bits to do, but I'll kind of give you an overview of the kitchen. We basically just added the tiles and that's all we really changed. And we also added a dishwasher, which is why there's that awkward space next to the dishwasher, which we haven't decided yet what to do with it. But that's our living room. And I hope that was kind of interesting and not boring for you guys. As you're watching this, I'm currently in Disneyland Paris with my family. So follow me on Instagram and Twitter for updates. And there will be a vlog on Tuesday. So I'm really excited for that. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. And let me know if you liked this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.